Back to reading The Bankrupt Bookseller. Since there are little vignettes, like each chapter, I'm hoping that's okay and everybody can follow or look back at the uh, playlist. Uh, this, 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 ev this evening, it's more about biographies. I am not partial to these omnibus books, but in, a, in its way, the big book of Heinemann's great short biographies of the world is worth having in stock, if only that I may read it myself. I have sold it, though, and as I had ordered a second copy which came today, I have been looking through it again. The book has been made by Barrett H. Clark, and by its dedication to Gamil Bradford, indicates that it came from the United States. It is printed in Great Britain, but the big idea is the star-spangled manner, as Beverly Nichols has it at, at its best. Clark tells me, he will tell the world if you will read it, but I like to think he tells me that the preparation for the book was a delightful adventure. His difficulty was not to make it big, but to keep it small, to give infinite riches in little room. In a way, that's my task as a bookseller, to select, to discard, to choose, and still be able to offer those who run but also read a collection of books uh, from which they would want to buy at least at least one. There are 49 biographies in this book and over 1,400 pages divided into six groups. The ancient world, medieval Europe, Renaissance Europe, 17th century Europe, 18th century Europe, and 19th century Europe with, with the United States. Some I miss, though I don't complain. I would have liked to see Boswell's Johnson for one and Macaulay's Clive for another, but the editor has good reasons for the choices that he has made. The book is a remarkable achievement, and I will push one or two who would be none the worse for seeing the inside of others' lives to buy this book for eight shillings sixpence. Eight and sixpence, I observe, is one hundred and two pence, it would make a good selling point to offer it to the parsimonious uh, for a hundred pence. If I tell a lot, if I sell a lot, I will not mind the loss of profit, and no one will know that I have sold it for half a groat less than the ap approved price. The Louis the Fourteenth by Saint Simon is new to me. I didn't know either that Saint Simon. Uh, was Louis de Rouvier, uh, Duc de Saint Simeon, although I did know that Voltaire's name was Francis Marie Arrat. It's linked up uh, with a couple of books I bought as remainders, which are good value nonetheless. Noel Williams, Pompadour, and Rick Hamer, I offer the pair for five shillings. I had a talk with the lady milliner next door about them, and told her she should study the celebrated courtesans of the past if she would know her sex. She did buy she didn't buy either, and on thinking it over I came to the obvious conclusion that they had not commanded her her interest because as illustrated, they neither of them wore hats. Reclaimer's picture is the one at twenty three by Gerald, and the Pompadour is the familiar one by Boucher. Uh, both lovely, though they did not secure a buyer. An unusual book of biography is Will Durant's Story of Philosophy, a book which combines the lives and opinions of the philosophers. I have to turn it pa its pages. It is a book in which I have found more satisfaction than any on my shelves. 25 shillings is a lot to pay for a book, but I would not hesitate to take 25 shillings of anyone's money for it. Some books one buys for their passing interest, some one, some one buys for reference. Durant's book do, uh, would do for a lifetime and leave a large margin for eternity. The conclusion of the book is very inspiring. One hopes it has begun to seed into the minds of the citizens of the United States. After praising wealth, believing that the abundant creation of wealth 
must be the prelude to culture the writer goes on to have become wealthy was the first necessity to people who must live before it can uh, philosophize we have grown faster than nations usually have grown and the disorder of our souls is due to the rapidity of our development we are like youths disturbed and unbalanced for a time but the sudden growth and experiences of puberty but soon our maturity will come our minds will catch up with our bodies our culture with our possessions perhaps there are greater souls than shakespeare's and greater minds than a plato's waiting to be born when we have learned to uh, we have learned to reverence liberty as well as wealth we will, we shall have our renaissance all very fine i agree but the sense of the shortness of life comes over me as I transcribe it. And and what of it? I demanded that if that if it start again. And what of it? I demand what of it if someone called uh Butterscamp uh, is born in Walkerville, Ohio or whatever it may be, one who is nobler in mind than Plato and greater soul than Shakespeare. What do I care for a future in which I can have no lot or part how can it uh, avail me of man's soars to the uh, empyrean or sinks to the depths i cannot avail you i answer myself life is only valuable as the personal experience that brings me back to biography and autobiography to the curiosity which we have about the lives of others curiosity about their lives is an echo it is from Cunningham Graham's book, Success, of which I have a copy on in Duckworth's old Greenback Library. The passage runs, quote, For those who fail, for those who have sunk, still battling beneath the muddy waves of life, we keep our love and that curiosity about their lives which makes their memories green and the cheap gold is dusted over, which once we have we we give success end quote and then quote again how few successful men are interesting he goes on hannibal alcibiades with raleigh mithridates and napoleon who would compare them for the moment uh with their more conquerors the essay is good the defeatism in me is attracted by such writing here is more from another forgotten book published in 1900 by Hodder and Stoughton. I got it, an often read copy, carefully marked with the following passage. Some of us have to be defeated in this life. We cannot all draw prizes, but we can remember that w whatever we may suffer in the buffetings of circumstance, there is still left a wide realm, not wholly destitute of beauty where we may live at least with usefulness and serenity we can make friends with books there is more of it in the opening chapter which is called the art of living the book itself heaven knows uh, what was in the mind that marked the passage is by wj dawson and can be bought by the man who wants and needs it for one shilling Writing these names, I remind myself I have the following. The Man Shakespeare, Frank Harris, The Life of Alcibiades, E.F. Benson, The Life of Napoleon Bonaparte, Sir Walter Scott, The Life of Sir Walter Raleigh, Patrick Fraser, uh, Tiddler. Frank Harris's book is the best I know on Shakespeare and most enlightening. Alcibiades is a new book. I haven't read it yet published by ben the bonaparte and raleigh are old and first uh undated and the second is beautiful little book published by oliver and boyd tweeddale court edinburgh 1833 they are a nice lot my stock of biographies is good i think man what do you want to know here are the windows which let you see into the other men what more would you the searcher of souls in the last great day will learn little from the book of judgment that you can learn from those these biographies but by, but by 
buy, buy, buy with little money and at no great price. Somebody may write my biography. I would give him, uh, I would have him show me as a pathetic fi figure, pathos lasts better in biography than mirth. What comic figures have come down the ages? There is nothing more demande than last season's jokes. They hardly bear retelling for far less recording. Therefore, Lynn, um, Lynn me as a sad case. Uh, there are always sympathetic hearts, and in such a world there will be someone who will sigh sympathetically over the sorrows of a simple and not too successful bookseller.